today most website actually looks very, very similar and it's actually becomes quite boring. And although we're trying to bring in inspiration here and try to break the mold of web design, the truth is most website actually looks the same. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why and how you should try and break away from that mold. Stay tuned. Hey designer friends, what is up? My name is Ron Segal, I'm a designer. Welcome to Flux, where we talk about design and building your career as a designer. And I wanna talk about the fact that most website today look quite boring. And the truth is this, look, there's so many UI kits. There are so many already best practices, right? From Google to Apple's, from, we're all looking at the same things, at the, the same things, we're all going to dribble, we're all going to awards, we're seeing the same websites again and again. And so what happens is it kind of becomes kind of like an echo chamber of we're all, we're all doing what other people are doing or what we think is best practices. And then the end result is everything becomes quite boring. Now, of course, there are some of those who will say, yes, well, actually boring is a good thing for the users because they know what to expect and then they know how to use the website. It's more usable when things are boring. And while that is true, you still want to stand out. One of the core things that we try to do as designers is create a memorable experience and to stand out, right? Humans, especially today, you're, we're bombarded with gazillion marketing messages, million different brands, we're all bombarded all the time, we're seeing visual stuff, visual stuff, buy this, buy that. And our brains already kind of like denies everything, can't remember everything, it's just blanks everything out. And so part, a key part of our role is how do we stand out? And this is actually very important because again, this is the goal of what we're doing. And I think I've basically men mentioned what the cause of this thing is. The cause of this thing is we're in this echo chamber, we're all looking at the same reference. And so when I say this, the solution is actually quite simple. You just have to stop looking where everybody is looking and you have to start looking sideways, right? But this is a little bit more complicated because nobody's gonna tell you where to look, right? You have to choose your own places. And I'm just gonna throw in some ideas of where to look, where I'm looking. You can look at the history of art. You can look at the history of cultures, right? Like let's say a specific country has a visual history of how people in the past have been creating fashion and artifacts and jewelry, all of these things. History is a huge, huge place to take visual reference from. You can look at offline media, whether this is magazines or uh, posters or music industry, where you're looking at a lot of innovation happening there visually. You can look at nature. So nature is crazy in terms of color combinations, in terms of patterns, in terms of layouts. Nature has crazy, you know, crazy inspiration that you look at. You can look at other disciplines of design, such as architecture. There's been very, very interesting things happening in architecture, both in recent times and also, you know, goes back to history, as I've mentioned before, and also fashion. Fashion has a lot of color combination, layout, fabrics, um, you know, a, a lot of things. So you want to start looking where everybody else is not looking. And this is, to be honest, really, because the word, because what I've just said is the world, is everything, is culture. And this is so broad. This is not like, here's a list of five websites that you should check for inspiration because that's, that's you're looking for the easy answer, right? The easy answer is, uh, here's five links to give you inspiration. I'm just telling you, hey, it's the world, open up in, encyclopedia or something like this. And this is pretty broad. So I think, and that's actually what makes, different designers come up with different tastes because their inspiration is always going to be based on what's really interesting for them, right? Um, so I've had, I've had a conversation on this channel, we're gonna link it with, uh, you know, award-winning designer Bruno Orazio, and, and he was talking a lot about uh, architecture and about Bauhaus and all of these things. So the, it's a very, very specific period in history, which he finds interesting. And he's spending all of his time looking at these things and learning about this period and how people were thinking about design back in that period. So that really in, in, informs his specific style of design, but other people might be inspired by a lot of different things. So I think you should follow, 
you should be curious. Hopefully you are curious if you're a designer and you want to create stuff. So follow your gut, follow the rabbit hole. And a lot of times when I go into this research phase or collecting inspiration or creating a mood board for a project, I go down the rabbit hole. You know, I might open up, <laughs> yeah, let me give you an example. I was doing a project in electronics. So I started reading all of these articles on cheap manufacturing and electronics on Wikipedia. And I was just starting to randomly open up tons of the links there to, to dive deep into each one of these uh, topics from the history of manufacturing and getting into science fiction's book and, and all kinds of futuristic things and into world politics, into why they're manufacturing things over there and not other places. So you start off your research. And again, your research a lot of times should not start in dribble. Your research should start, I think, a lot of times in Wikipedia for you to understand even the concept of what this thing is, what this topic is that you're thinking about. And then you, you just start following the rabbit hole and see how deep it goes. And in each one of these topics, there is going to be a lot of visual inspiration that hopefully is going to open up your mind. And when you have different referencing to look at, your end result and your design will look quite different from everybody else. So hopefully that will help your design be less boring. If you have your own tips to where you follow inspiration, not in the typical places, make sure to share it with your friends here in the comment below. Make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you on the next video. Peace out.